I'm going, yeah, do it, do it, do it, do it, do it. So, okay, Loki and we were going to take it, call it taking a vacation from worry, but we're going to call it taking a holiday from the holidays or a vacation from the holidays. British and European English are in American English are vastly different. So it, holiday can mean a vacation and I'm, I'm not sure if vacation means anything different anywhere else. But, you know, we were talking about, I said, you know, when you're young, no matter how crazy a life, home life you have, you usually do enjoy the holidays. You do. Because you still feel the magic of the season. And maybe you had Santa Claus and maybe you didn't. But you had the decorations and wrapping presents. And, you know, I was, I was fortunate. I was blessed with a mom of, you know, she would do all this baking and cooking. And I would say, why are we doing this for these really mean people? Because I had a crummy family. And she'd say, this is how we show love. And I'd say, why are we showing love to people that don't deserve it? Because I have a highly logical brain. And I'm like, well, if you don't appreciate something, I'm never doing it for you. I was like that tall. And I was already like, I ain't doing this for these people ever because they don't appreciate anything you do. And she was like, well, you have to show love to people even when they don't show love to you. We would still disagree about that today. <laughs> but she would bake all these cookies and all this other stuff. And, you know, she would wrap presents. And she's the one that taught me to wrap presents. And she used to work in, in Podesta's. So grab a drink as it might be a while. She used to work in Podesta's in California. And the way she got that, that, that job, and this is the way uh, the gods have of telling you, there's going to be a gay person in your future. Hello, the the very gay manager at the time. And this is like we're talking decades ago, decades and decades ago. My, am I old? <laughs> um, he, he told her, you know, um, he was going to hire her. And the thing was where they were living at the time, because my dad was in the military, so they were stationed in California. Um, she shouldn't have qualified, but he said, you, you seem like a nice person. And she had worked in a florist shop here. So she's working in this florist shop and she's doing all this work. He taught her how to do presents and everything. So, you know, I learned how to pass down to me through my mom. I learned how to decorate a Christmas tree from a gay man and how to, and how to wrap presents from a gay man. So the gay community is always giving back to the gay community. I got, yes. And you know, I, I learned how to, you know, do all the ornaments and I learned how to hang all the stuff. And, you know, at one point I said to mom, I said, you know, I wasn't being over religious, I promise. I said, why don't we do this as like a gift for Jesus or a gift for God or whatever? Because I was raised Roman Catholic. And she's like, what? I said, the people we're giving it to as a gift of love. That's fine, but why don't we also do it as a gift for Jesus? Because he will appreciate it. <laughs> She's like, oh, okay. And after a while, we both were getting the distinct idea that if decorating and wrapping presents and everything made us happy to keep doing it, but it was like, God, I, I told you as a Roman Catholic was, you know, getting on this microphone. These people don't appreciate everything you're doing. Please stop. And after a while, my, my father saw how toxic his family was, and my mom realized and woke up to how toxic her mother was, and they started to do things different. My mother wasn't going to be firing up the oven every Christmas because she had health issues, too. And my father kind of started to wake up from the person he was, and, you know, my parents got to be better people later in their lives. Thankfully, they they tried. <laughs> I'm on track to try at the same time, I guess. And they started to just buy store bought cookies. And the first year, those were given to the both sides of the family. Boy, did they pitch a fit! And my father, for like one of the first times in his life, stood up to his family and said, "All these years that she's been so sick, she's been propping herself up on the stove, and she's been cooking for you and everything, and she's been, you know, working away in the kitchen." You've never once said thank you. And you've always told her that, oh, her cookies aren't as good as X, Y, and Z. My mother's cookies were heaven on earth. I wish I had her touch. I do not. I bake cookies, the gods go into mourning. <laughs> but, you know, I go, yeah, yep. <laughs> thank you, dear. Um, he said, no, you never appreciated it. He said, you're going to get what you get for Christmas from now on. Oh, did his family raise a stink. So did my, my mother's mother and... He was like, no, she's not doing this for you. 
And, you know, sometimes you wonder why you were, you had such crummy family on both sides. And it was like, well, I had that, that, that nucleus of my mom, who was a nice person, who had her own struggles in her life, but she was a nice person. And, look, he said, we're going to take a holiday from the holidays. You have, you know, you felt it was God, Loki, not, not Loki, it was God, Jesus, whoever, St. Michael, telling you to unlock those women you have. But you still have boundaries up. The boundary you have up is, hey, if you care enough about me as a human being, you will call me. You're you're able to call me. The one woman has my email. You know, it's not like she can't get in touch with me. It's not like I'm hard to find. And I'd called, uh, my one uncle called me. Nice uncle, my bro mother's side of the family. had called me. And I called him back and I said, hey, I just want you to know X, Y, and Z. You know, I don't feel like we, we got off on the right foot on Thanksgiving, so I called him back because, it to me, it's a pressure. I hear from this guy, like, maybe once, twice a year, maybe three, and it's like, I have all this pressure, and I can guarantee I'm going to say something wrong, or I'm going to say something that I usually wouldn't say. Nothing mean or offensive, but just something stupid. Um, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And, you know, it's, I called him to clarify. And, look, he said, we're going to take a vacation from the holidays, from the stress-filled craziness that the holidays have become. You know, that's why this year we concentrated on would we rather have food or we would rather have gifts. Not to both. You know, not to both. Um, the gods, the furs and everything that they got, they consider their gifts. You know, they consider their gifts, but they got those early. And so those will be their gifts. You know, there will be a little little incest and a couple of car figures, but other than that, you know, and I'm talking about little tiny things going on Amazon, that'll be it. There won't be a ton of gifts. If there are gifts, they're going to be practical things like cookies and food and stuff we can eat or, you know, use around the house. And it let go a huge amount of the stress. I, there's still just enough for me to justify wrapping it, but, you know, and I'll get to wrap like four or five things. And we'll be able to open them, but I said, you know, I don't feel, this is the first year, I don't feel like I'll feel like, um, lack if there isn't really much under the tree. I said, this is the first year I'm perfectly content because we've worked more on getting the food we want for the holidays and, you know, locking out each and every time and finding stuff at really low prices, but that takes sitting forever on Amazon and just going through and looking at hundreds of items, but it was worth it. And we concentrated on having the divine family we want our own and to work with, you know, my parents have been gone for over a decade now, talking to them, talking to my brother, inviting the ancestors, and do I want to have anything to do with these toxic people now that they've passed? There's two school of thoughts on people once they pass. One is that once they leave this earth and they don't have to grasp and greed and everything for money or position or power or fame, because none of that matters on the other side, they they just they drop it all and they become really nice, really nice people. And then there's the other thought that's like they become more loving, but they're they're still they're still learning their lessons. So you know, don't expect that your grandmother just became sainted when she was a rotten skunk up until the day she passed. I got yep, tell the truth, girl. I'm kind of in between. I'm like I've had dreams of both of my grandmothers coming back and helping me, which would be very out of character for either grandmother. Like they would send you that stuff like they loved you, but only like because it's it's expected in our culture for grandmothers to send their grandchildren and stuff and you would just never feel love from them like they were very caustic horrible people a lot of the time i still love them though you're they're your grandmother and they're what you get and we just we have to work on you know do we kind of want to make a place for this because i am getting like this this not not for the video length but for this this hurry up signal from loki of it's kind of time. I don't know for everyone, but for me, it's like, hurry up, get all the stuff in place, you know, let everything go, let it go, if you can, if you can't, you know, that's fine, let it go, let a very horrible thing they did, and especially with the deceased ancestors, if you have room for them, if you have room for them, and whatever they did wasn't so terrible that you can't ever forgive them. Or you don't want to set up a healthy boundary of, hey, you were a crummy person in life. I don't care if you're the nicest angel in the afterlife. I don't want to talk to you. Just just work on reopening those relationships. And mom and dad already gave me like a lot of 
love pink, especially my mom. She would be the first one there. She was like, yes, she's talking to us again. I, I had a lot of conflict and I would like try to work, bring them close. And I remember how crummy of parents they could be at times. And, you know, I, I have done a lot of cleansing and last year I threw out some stuff was Marie Kondoing like a nut. And now I regret it, but I said, you know, I kind of don't regret it because it feels like I had to sacrifice things like a couple family pictures and a couple things from nativity. I said, it felt like I had to sacrifice those things because we were always pretending to be a happy family, but we weren't. And I sacrificed the illusion. And I'm like, this was a really crummy family. We might have, you know, had love, but it was like really dysfunctional, <laughs> really wrong love. And it was, you know, this family needed to stop pretending like we all loved each other when all everybody ever did was fight and grasp and hate one another and everything else. I was like, we we did a good job of pretending. We did a good job of pretending. And to this day, I'll still have people in town tell me, your father was such a wonderful man. Yeah. Excuse me one second, guys. Allergies. Sorry. Okay, sorry about that. They'll say, your father was such a wonderful man. Your your grandmother was such a sweet woman. Psh, my grandmother was a witch on wheels. There are a few people that will admit it to me, but I'm like, my grandmother was a witch on wheels. So was the other one. Take your pick. And my father was a horrible man for a good part of his life, but he really knew how to put on the sweet Catholic boy act. You know, he put on the altar boy act full out when we went out in public. Which was why we loved getting out of the house, because as long as we were out of the house, he was fine, usually. Um, but, you know, <laughs> I'm not sharing that stuff to bring you guys down, but you can, you can look back at all that and you can let it go. And take a holiday from the holidays. Where are we going with this? He's like, yeah, just drop the stuff you don't need anymore. So we've cooked, you know, holiday dinners. I've dropped cooking a big turkey. I went down to a turkey breast for a while. And then one year I went down to canned turkey and it was like my life changed <laughs> forever. I've even done years where I just do those Hormel completes with the turkey in them. Because I'm like, it's just me. And, you know, would I pass up a, a roasted turkey? No, I would not. But I don't feel like cooking forever. And I don't feel like cooking 20 sides for, you know, for one person. And I said, you know, a lot of the sides that I wasn't a fan of, I just let them go. Like, um, green bean casserole. <laughs> I don't know why people have it for the holidays. Some people love it, and every time I go to somebody's house, they make sure I get lots of that. They're like, here, have double. And I'm like, you just know I hate it, don't you? But I always manage to eat it all, and I'm like, this stuff is punishment food. Whoever came up with this? Um, <laughs> I'm sorry if you, you actually like it. I just don't. Um, but, you know, I let go of sides like that. I let go of trying to make stuffing and mashed potatoes and everything else. We just make a couple of sides now. It's enough for us. So let go of the stress of cooking stuff you don't like. Especially if it's something you don't like. If you don't like the turkey and you really don't like eating meat and you want to make tofurkey this year or you want to make a pizza or something else, do that. Do that. Talk to anyone else in the household so that you can compromise. But, you know, do that. Let go of the rush of all the crazy presents. Let go of, you know, the feeling that you need to have, like, X amount of presents underneath underneath a tree. Or even if you're not up to decorating this year, let go of that. You know, let go of whatever's not serving you this year. That's what I'm getting. Let go of whatever's not sure serving you. And just let it go. And if you decide to do it later, fine. If you decide to do it after the holidays, fine. But, you know, let go of it now. You know, let go of it now. We had people in the family that, you know, they were, um, they switched to Greek Orthodox. So their, their Christmas was always after Christmas anyhow. And they loved it because everything was on sale. Um, do that if you want. Um, you know, I'm talking about Christmas, but, you know, if you can't manage to swing Yule on the 21st, don't worry about it. You know, the gods are going to be okay. So take a holiday from the holidays, a vacation from the holidays, whatever, you know, um, if you need to, it's okay to drop stuff this year. If it's, it's stressing you out and you can't get, you know, my family, it was crazy. It was like every woman, well, yeah, every woman, my mom, both the grandmothers, the auntie, this was like crazy amounts of money. And no wonder we had bill problems after the holidays. Got a, got a point set up and not, they wouldn't just take, my mom would take a really teeny tiny one. 
In fact, she started to buy fake ones because, you know, my dad was going into debt just getting these huge, you know, the family demanded to get these huge poinsettias. Let go of that kind of craziness this year. And a huge box of chocolates and a gift because God forbid they don't get all free. Like, you know, bring bring the gifts that you can't afford to bring me. Let go of that. Let go of that. Just tell people can't do it this year. You know, let go of it. Yeah, we give you special permission to tell people, you know what? I really can't do that this year. I can come and visit you. I can maybe bring you a card or something, but I got the money for that this year. And he's like, yes, that exactly. If you don't got the money for it this year, don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. They're going to survive without that poinsettia and the two pound box of chocolates and, and the slippers and the gifts and all the other stuff. They're going to survive without that, especially if they're not present in your life the rest of the year or they're only grief to you the rest of the year, they're going to survive without that. You're not being cruel. You're just you're just setting boundaries. You're saying, you know what? You're horrible 360-some days a year. You're not getting a present this year. I love you, but I'm setting boundaries with you. You do, you do nothing the rest of the year, even remotely, to qualify for getting presents on Christmas. It's, it's nothing anybody so That was a big lesson Loki had to teach me. You don't owe people a relationship. You don't owe them presence. You don't owe them kindness. You don't owe them friendship. Some people are crummy and they're going to stay crummy no matter how nice you are. You're not going to be the one to reclaim them. So just let them go. And usually those kind of crummy people, the only boundary you have to set is to not call them, not text or not email. You'll never hear from them again. So if you guys like what you see, I get, ah, uh -huh. <laughs> if you guys like what you see, like, comment, subscribe, and we will talk to you later. Bye-bye.